Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here. And let's wake up the football gods. Wake up here this morning. How's everybody doing on hope day? It is literally the middle of the week. Oh, my God. Guys, do you realize... We are under 40 days. We are under 40 days for the Dallas Cowboys to kick off against the Los Angeles Rams. In fact, we're well below 40 days before the kickoff of the season because we got that Thursday night opener. It's not far away. It, it, it's crazy to think that tomorrow was supposed to be the Hall of Fame game. But the world has kind of changed over the course of the last six months. Sadly, we're trying to make do with what we can do. Uh, before I get on to Amari Cooper, I want, want to take care of some business here. Um, I keep getting messages from people uh, that say that I'm, you know, blocking their comments or, or things like that. And it's actually not me that's blocking your comments. Uh, YouTube has actually done a lot of changes throughout the COVID situation and, and such that they're actually clamping down because I've actually made some comments to some people a few times and my comments weren't showing up. There are key words out there that if you use, hold your comment for review. And what I realized yesterday, because see, I, I'm not really good with computers and things like that. And I had a person who was telling me how much uh, I got the welfare check, microphone and all that. It wasn't the microphone, it wasn't the problem. The problem was, is I dusted my whole mixer over here. And I thought I didn't hit anything. But there's actually a stereo level switch that's right here. And I turned it a little bit. So when I did, it made it, you know, it was peeking it out. So, you know, I'm still learning all this stuff because I never went to school to do this or had anybody sit down and show me. I've literally felt my way through it. But back to the comments. We have so many people that are just so full of hate that every other word coming out of their mouth is a cuss word. If that's your comments, they're automatically going to get held for review or deemed spam. So spam comments, and we've got somebody who keeps going through and putting, you know, links to, you know, girls and sites and things like that, that we keep, you know, blocking and it's another name and all that. We, we know they're spamming there. But there were over 2,600 comments that were deemed spammy and over 7,000 comments that were held for review because of people basically cussing at me or whatever and things like that. So understand that th this is not the place for it. And you don't have to be here, okay? I am a Dallas Cowboy fan, diehard one. From as long as I can remember, I've had one team throughout my whole life. I have my own opinions on how I feel things should be done. And you, are free to like my opinions, disagree with them, you know, enjoy them, hate them, whatever. But you don't have to be there. There's nobody that says that you must watch Mark Holmes 30 minutes a day. No. You don't like it? Step. I get it. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Hell, I get on my own damn nerves. So that's where that is. If you're wondering what's happening to your comments, take it up with YouTube because they are beginning to censor more and more things and you have to be careful on what on my end I put up because you can lose your channel real easily and I've worked too hard for too long to let some jackass be the reason that I lose what I enjoy back to what I enjoy let me sure I got the did I, did I wake up what, football got wake, wake up guys wake up up here they sleeping on the job so we are now, of course, in somewhat training camp, which right now is strength and conditioning until about the 13th. They'll actually start putting helmets on and actually start running around on the field. Um, as we've seen, like in baseball, um, I'm trying to, I can't remember the player's name, but you're seeing injuries. You know, a guy tore his, ruptured his Achilles tendon the other night. You're going to see a lot of players that have soft tissue injuries, pulled hamstrings and things like that, because they weren't able to work out throughout the whole season. And that's why the NFL, the NFLPA, 
in their agreement, basically they're saying, we just want to do strength and conditioning for like two weeks just to get these guys up to speed because some guys have gyms to work at, some of them don't. You know, Some quarterbacks have a football field at their house where they can bring players over and run routes. Other ones don't. So that's one of the advantages of having Dak Prescott. The thing that's going to be interesting for me is Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper, you know, it seems like almost every player on the Dallas Cowboys, it's a love-hate relationship. We don't have anybody, I think, on this team that everybody looks at and says, oh, man, we can agree that this guy is the real deal. It isn't. And so with Amari Cooper, you know, as much as Philly 500 calls him Amari Pooper, you know, the, 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 he, he talked about wanting to get Amari Cooper before when they, when they thought they had a chance. You know, the Reds, excuse me, the Washington football team wanted to get him. But a lot of Cowboy fans will say, man, he ain't that great. We shouldn't have paid him. Get him out of here. He's a bum. But I got to tell you, when he's healthy, he is freaking incredible. And his route running is amazing. Now, he's got this, uh, or being known, or people believe that he checks out. I'm not trying to make excuses for him, but he was dealing with a multitude of injuries to his legs starting out this year, or excuse me, last year at this time, with plantar fasciitis. And understand, when you can't plant, when you can't push off, and you can't practice, it's hard to be, you know, perfect every game. Like I said, I'm not trying to make excuses, but, you know, when you have one injury, it ends up tending to lead to others. Because you're favoring, you know, that, that foot and trying not to cut on it, then you start leaning on the other leg, which can turn around and end up being problems for the other leg. And you saw he had thigh problems, knee problems, and foot problems. And even with that, he still performed pretty well. He's still one of the top receivers in the NFL. This year, I think the attitude, and I still believe from what I've kind of heard, that there were some people who weren't crazy about Sanjay Lau. And his whole carrying bricks around all the time. Now, I don't know for sure. But one of the things that Sanjay Lau, and I remember seeing at training camp, had them do was carry blocks around on the field. When Sanjay Lau first got here, the first practices he had with them for the first week, they never caught passes. They worked on route running. Now, I could look at Amari Cooper and say Amari Cooper's got some of the best route running skills out there. But I think you needed to work on the catching some more than they did. Because for us to lead the NFL in drop passes, it's not a good thing. But I think, personally, I think Amari Cooper is really focused and ready to have a great year. And I want to play a little bit of this interview that they had yesterday. Because I really love what I heard from Amari. But you got to understand Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper is very, very low-key. He's one of those guys, you need to check his pulse. Is he alive? He's not very vocal. He's not very outgoing. I, I dare say he's a bit of an introvert. So hearing him speak is a rarity. Hey, Amari. You were, uh, when we talked to you last year, you were telling us how uh, you really wanted to re-sign here, and that was your intention. Can you talk a little bit about why why you were so committed to coming back here and, and also explain your decision a little bit about uh, willing to be taking a little bit less than, than what Washington offered it in order to come back here and play for the Cowboys? Yeah, I just like everything uh, about being a Dallas Cowboy. I love the culture that we've created here um, and just the atmosphere, um, both in the building and outside of the building. Um, in terms of, you know, being in the city of Dallas uh, and the surrounding areas. Um, and I guess that would be the same reasons why I was willing to take less money to stay here. Um, that coupled with the fact that I had uh, the privilege of being able to play on a different team, I understand um, that, you know, every culture uh, isn't the same. Every city isn't the same. Um, and every team isn't the same. So. Uh, me being able to see that while being on another team and having the opportunity to be on a team that I really love, um, I wouldn't trade that for, you know, for a little bit more money. Amari, how have your discussions been with uh, Coach McCarthy and Kellen uh, the last couple of uh, days that you've been around? Yeah, I, you know, 
I haven't had an opportunity to really talk to them in depth how I wanted to, but uh, I guess we'll be able to get around to that pretty soon. Mm, no, nah, it hasn't changed. Um, the plays haven't really changed that much. Uh, the verbiage is a little bit different. Um, I think that has a lot to do with, you know, Coach McCarthy coming in and kind of being used to calling certain plays a certain thing. Uh, but the plays are pretty much the same or similar. We talked to you last year about your consistency at times and some of the games you were playing at the level you wanted to, not others. How did you work on that in the off season? And just generally, given the pandemic, what have you been able to do to stay in shape and keep yourself sharp? Yeah, just going back, um, reviewing film, and seeing what I could have done better in certain situations, um, how I could have maybe came back to the ball or attacked the ball differently or attacked the defender differently, um, you know, just to be more consistent for my team. Uh, in terms of the uh, the pandemic and staying in shape, you know, I have some machines at home, um, and I had to sign up for a gym membership when the gym kind of opened back up, um, which I was used to doing already because I did it when I was in Oakland. So, yeah. Amari, what did you think of the team drafting? What did you think of the team drafting CD Lamb, and just what do you think that you guys can do as a receiver group now, adding another piece like him to the offense? Yeah, I think it was a a great pickup. Um, you know, you have to draft the best player on the board. Um, everybody understands that, and I think he's a, a, a great receiver. And I think, um, you know, with me and Michael Gallup going for 1,000 yards uh, last season, I think the expectation is to have 3,000 yards receive 3,000 yard receivers this year. Have you had to spend any time with him yet? Yeah, yeah, we've been, um, you know, before we were able to come in the building, we were running routes together. Um, and then, you know, just talking through some routes and stuff like that. So definitely. How, what type of learner is he? Be? What have you been able to pick up from him and how he, he's going to have to adapt to uh, here to the NFL? I think he's a quick learner. Um, I mean, he already has a, a, a good foundation. Uh, he's fundamentally sound in his route running. Um, you know, it's, it's very small, nitpicky things um, that, you know, I help him with. Um, that I that I may see with him being a rookie, but uh, I think he already has a, a really good foundation. What's been your question with head coach? Sorry, what's been your question with head coach Mike McCarthy so far, Maury? Say it again. What's been your questions of new head coach Mike McCarthy so far? What do you mean, my questions of him or to him? No. What have you? What have? What's been? sort of your takeaway of him so far, being in just the Zoom meetings. I know you guys really only got, what, the meeting on Sunday to sort of interact with them. What's been your impression of him so far? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's been a good impression, man. Just knowing his background, um, you know, watching um, Green Bay over the years and how consistent they've been and, you know, going far into the playoffs and everything uh, like that. Um, you know, I got to talk to Devontae Adams, um, when we were at the Pro Bowl, which, which is a player who you know played for McCarthy for a number of years, and he, he really liked the offense, and he told me that I was going to really like it. So all of my takeaways have been really positive. All right. So if you want to see the whole um, interview there, DallasCowboys.com has the whole thing. I don't want to take all of it on there and make this video too long. But some of the takeaways are, well, so far um, – Mike McCarthy and, and the players haven't had that much interaction, but so far he likes what he's heard from Devontae Adams and things, and, and you're get, he's going to like the type of offense. The thing that I think is actually really cool, because most players understand that they are an independent contractor that they work for themselves. They're, it's it's not really a team concept. It's where I can make the most money for, you know, while I can. And that's usually the driver for most things. But Amari Cooper put out there that, you know, he turned down more money and an opportunity to play with another team because he likes the culture here. And so you can see that he is not one who's uncomfortable being in the limelight and having to speak and things like that. He feels comfortable and at home with the team, the location, Dallas, and everything else. And it's kind of interesting that he was talking about 
um, working out um, that, you know, I've had to go ahead and lift at home and get a gym membership, kind of like how I had to do with the Raiders. And that may end up being a testament to having the star. Um, normal years, we would have the players all going to the star and working out, the players living in Dallas. And I think that is one of those things that's going to be key and has been key for the Dallas Cowboys is the fact that most of the players live in Dallas area all year. A lot of players don't live in the NFL market that they play in, in which case they've got to come back. But I think that the Cowboys, as Amari put it, that you know we've been running routes and working together and things like that, um, having them in the same area, even through COVID um, and social distancing, they've been able to do work together. Now, the plays haven't really changed. The terminology has changed. And the thing that I really and truly loved is the fact that we've already started working with um, C.D. Lamb. You know, generally speaking, what happens when the rookies come in, rookies are usually, as we know from Dez, uh, carrying bags and everything else, you know, and being, you know, the, the, the redheaded stepchild, so to speak. But to be embraced and already working with Amari Cooper and him already gaining respect and talking about, you know, him and Michael Gallup both having over a thousand yards and the expectations being three guys over a thousand yards. That is one helping to mentor a guy who eventually may end up taking your place. Two, it's looking at it from the standpoint of we're a team and I need you so that way we can achieve. And the best part about it is I look at it as we are all in this together. I'm only successful if you're successful. I'm going to make sure that you're successful. These are all things that bode well for the team. It may end up being that some of Mari Cooper's numbers are lessened because he's doing so well that they're trying to take him out of the equation. But then that means more opportunities for other guys like Michael Gallup and C.D. Lamb. And ultimately, what you want to have is you want to have equal distribution of the ball so that way the defenses don't know where it's coming from. You have to be excited about having an Amari Cooper, a Michael Gallup, and a C.D. Lamb. And as I talked about last night, when you think of us having Alan Hearns and Bryce Butler and Terrence Williams and Cole Beasley, we have literally in three years completely – completely redone our wide receiver core. And we went from, meh, where they talked about us having about the 29th best offensive weapons to having one of the top wide receiver cores in the NFL. Brother, it's a new day in Dallas, and I just can't wait for this season to get on. So i got some work to do in my workshop, and then i got to go see my, my cousin Daniel's got a root, leaking roof, uh, kind of like that Washington football team. Yeah, they always are dripping. Uh, Got to help him out and take care of that. And, of course, keep you up to speed with everything that is the Dallas Cowboys. I'm Mark Holmes, and thank God we got football to talk about. I'll see you soon.